last episode, I unboxed a bunch of goodies so I could pimp out the XR30s. Now it's time to build a $30.74 do-it-yourself doser and fix the ATO container. I used to have a dosing container. It was made out of plexiglass and for whatever reason during the move, I cracked it in a bunch of different areas. I guess it was just brittle because I haven't used it for so long. And I think at one point it was actually sitting in the sun. So what I did is I just went to my local Walmart and pick up one of these containers. And this is supposed to be exactly a gallon. So what I need to do is cut a hole in the top. And Poseidon Creations actually gave me two of these. What they are is you drill a hole in something and uh, screw this in. And what this does is it connects to an acrylic rod at the bottom and at the top is where your inlet hose would go for your doser. So what I need to do is just drill a hole in the top of this put this in and cut this piece of acrylic to length. And as you can see in the container, right in the middle, there's a bump and it actually sticks up. So if I drill the top in the middle, it's going to hit that divot and this tube is not going to reach all the way to the bottom. So what I have to do is drill a hole somewhere on the side, about right here, so that the acrylic tube sits somewhere around here. And with the hole drilled out, I will now install the fitting. as I can. There we go. There's the top. So now I just have to measure the piece of acrylic and then give the piece of acrylic a cut. And now with the piece of acrylic cut the length, I'm going to push that in fitting. Just as simple as that. And then take our container, screw it on. And there it is. See how close it is to the bottom. Perfect height. So I've had this dosing pump in my possession for quite a long time. Can't even remember where I got it from. And I just completely rebuilt it and cleaned it all off. And as you can see, it works pretty well. And then the next thing I did is I just made this dosing pump bracket out of ABS plastic. And what I'm gonna do is super glue that to the container itself, just like that. Not quite sure if you can see that on camera, but I sanded the side of the container and I also sanded the back of the ABS mount where this is going to be mounted to. So there's a clean connection between the two. And then I'll just give this about 24 hours and then wait for this to dry. And so it's the next day and I put a little bit more work into it. And as you can see, now the mount is on and the pump is installed and the inlet comes from the bottom of the tube, comes through this adapter, comes through this pipe, comes through this tube, comes into the pump and this is the outlet. So the next thing I have to do is just solder on the connections on the bottom of the pump, figure out exactly how much awful reef I'm putting in here and dosing, and then go from there. And so I just got back from Home Depot and I grabbed a couple fittings. The first fitting I got is a 90, as you can see there. And uh, this is gonna be a quick disconnect. And the other piece is just another 90. And since I'm going to be making the formula with this container, what I need to do is on the pump side, make a quick disconnect so I can remove this from the sump and mix the awful reef inside of this container. Now I have a lot of this tube left over from previous projects and since I don't have anything that would fit this, it would have to be special order from Amazon and I just really don't want to go through that whole process. I'm going to use this tube and slip it over top of that tube so it looks something like that. And that is just about as best as I can get it. So I might put some super glue over top of that so this tube does not fall out. But for now, what I'm going to do is probably cut it somewhere around here, just like so, and then grab my quarter inch union quick disconnect and put it on the end, push in really firm, and now that's locked into place. So now I can disconnect this whole thing from the sump to mix my awful reef inside of this container. Now the only thing I'm going to have to do is find a connector so I can cut this cable off so when I do remove this whole thing out of the system, I can just quickly disconnect the cable for it too. I did happen to find this connector 
in my electronics bin. So one side is a female, one side is a male, and they connect together. And I think that'll work quite well. So what I'm gonna do is cut this cable and solder this side to this side, and then this side to the other side of the cable. And now, as you can see, both sides have been soldered. So what I'm gonna do now is just throw some electrical tape on each side and go from there. So as it turns out, this pump is bad. Uh, what's happening is when I turn it on, it's leaking from the inside. So what I think is this tube has gone bad inside. So I'm going to order another one from Amazon and it should be here within a few days. So on to the next project. So now I'm gonna jump back on this ATO container. And what I have to do is, I don't know if you can see this that well, but right here, the two pieces of plexiglass were separated during shipping when it was cracked. Poseidon Creations did a fantastic job. I mean, I don't think I could have asked for more packaging, so I know it's not their fault at all. So what I need to do is grab my weld on and my applicator and actually turn this container upside down with the corner being on the desk. And then I could take the applicator on the inside and apply the weld on on the inside and fill this crack. So right now I just put a temporary piece of wood underneath of the container and I've got some weld on in my applicator container. So now what I'm going to do is just make sure this is tight and this is ready. And then just kind of lean on in here best I can and just start applying the weld on all the way down the seam. Make sure I got it right in this crack. Looks like I do. So I think I might have got it. Going to give this about 10 minutes to dry and harden and I'll be right back. And just about 10 minutes later, as you can see, it looks like I got it. It's not the most professional job. And Poseidon Creations told me to use clamps. I do not have clamps this wide and this long. So as I was applying the solvent, I was just pressing down and putting pressure on it. And to me, it seemed like that worked. As you can see, it's a clear line all the way through. It's not as professional as Poseidon Creations, but hey, I think this is gonna work great. So the next thing I have to do is cut some wood, this same kind of wood, um, spray paint that white, and then put that in the cabinet, put this in there, make some calc, and, and this should be good to go. got the pump in the mail and I ordered this from Amazon and here is the pump and it says 12 volt D2 and it looks pretty similar to the other one and here is just a reference between the two pretty similar they both say D2 on them so I guess I ordered the right one so what I'm gonna do next is hook up my power supply and the power terminals to the pump just to test it make sure this works correctly so i'm just going to quickly plug this in and it looks like it works great hopefully the camera picks this up but you can actually see they marked one side with a red marker and that's the positive symbol so the positive goes on that side of the pump so the next thing i'm working on is dosing this off a reef now I've dosed this stuff in the past, but I've used a premix, and this is a powder, so I have to mix this myself. And after doing a lot of investigation, talking with Tropic Marin directly, it seems as though, after all my calculations, I need to use six of these spoons per 0.26 gallons. And after doing the math, I'm going to need 24 of these. I can just put my thumb here. You can see how much that is. It seems like a lot to me, but I need 24 of these per one gallon of water. So if any of you have used this before, can you please tell me how many spoons you use per gallon? Because this just doesn't seem right. So after briefly chatting with Tropic Marin and asking the questions that I was really interested in finding out, 
It seems as though 24 spoonfuls is for 1.4 gallon, which seems about right. If you're gonna use a whole gallon, which I've done over here, 104 is running a little hot. So on your 24 spoonful, just knock a little bit of the mixture out and you should be good to go. Now I've already pre-mixed a bunch of this stuff. I used 24 spoonfuls in this one gallon container. I don't know if this will pick it up on camera, but it almost looks like there's brown sludge on the bottom of this. I spent around four hours mixing this. I think maybe every 20 minutes or so I spent, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds mixing this up. And I just could not get the bottom of this stuff mixed up in the water column and I could not get it to go away. And it almost looks like there's algae growing inside. Uh, kind of sketchy. If I shake it up a little bit, you can see it's just kind of, or maybe you can't see it, but it just, it looks like a, like an algae film. So I hope this is okay to use. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is just installing the pump back in the place where it was last time. So what I am gonna do next is just reinstall the pump back on the piece of ABS plastic and rewire everything and uh, get this thing ready for the tank. So now I got all the plumbing for the doser installed. I have the doser installed and that's pretty much what it looks like. So now this thing's ready to go in the cabinet and start dosing off a roof. And here is the doser installed inside of the cabinet. Sorry about that ticking noise, if you can hear that. It seems as though with one of the XR30s, something's going on inside of the fan area. You can hear that ticking noise. Maybe when I put the diffuser back on, um, maybe something's touching. I'll have to take a look at that in a little bit. And here is the output of the doser. I just have this temporarily rigged up. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in the future. I might get one of these magnets to mount on the glass to hold some of my outputs. Because I might do something else in the future, I'm not quite sure. But as of right now, this is just temporary. I just need something to come in, go over the side and 90 down. But not touch the water so it doesn't start a siphon. But now, I'm going to get on my Apex app. And I'm going to hit the doser on. And as you can see, it works beautifully. So on to the next project. So here's just a status update of this XR30. In the morning time, when these both come on, the status on both show blue, but on this particular XR30, it flashes yellow. And I'm not quite sure what that is or what that means. So I took the unit apart, I took the diffuser off, I took out the Mobius chip, I cleaned off the contacts, put the Mobius chip back in, reset it, and sometimes these will both sync up, and sometimes this will not, it flashes yellow, so when I see that happening, I have to go into the Mobius app, reset the device, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But for right now, I contacted saltwateraquarium.com, told them about the issue, 
they're supposed to send me another Mobius chip, but now they're back ordered, so I have to wait for that chip to be in stock. And once it's in stock, they will ship the chip out to me. And as of right now, this is my Calc Solution container. It's a three gallon jug. It's been working quite well for me. Right now I use four and a half teaspoons per three gallons of water. And I got it just about worked out. Sometimes my calc is a little low and sometimes it's a little high. What I've been doing is dosing the alpha reef to compensate in case it does drop a little low. So as of right now, I have about that much water left. Once I get to about there at the bottom, I am going to put in my new Poseidon Creations calc reservoir in place, take this out, and install that into the cabinet. That's going to wrap up this week's episode. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below in the comments section. And if you like the videos, please like, subscribe, and do all the good things. And I'll see everyone in the next episode.